What's going on? It's been a while, again. Today we're picking up where we left off with the last video. Doing something to this car. Not to this car, but this one. So I bought this about a month ago. And I think it's still in here. Yeah. Same boost gauge that I had in my Golf. The exact same one. So I got it for this. And today we're gonna to be trying to install this into the car. So this is the gauge. And this is the hardware that comes with it. And I don't know if this is gonna be enough. So first thing I'm gonna do is see how long this is. The boost gauge is gonna be sitting up here. We got a feeder wire down there, or I don't even know how I'm gonna do this. We'll feed, a, feed the tube to that side and poke it through the firewall. Oh. When did that go missing? My Audi badge is gone. What the fuck? Anyway. When did that fall off? It might, it could be anywhere. It's probably long gone. I'm pretty sure it comes out under this. We can run the hose through and into here, which is where we're gonna plug it into this hole here. So that's actually leaking. So it's a good job we're gonna actually bung it up. Now I'd just like to say a big thank you to Car Vertical for supporting the channel over the last year or two. Without the support, a lot of the stuff you've seen wouldn't be happening and I'd like to just say thank you for supporting this video as well. Car Vertical is a website where you can check a vehicle's recorded history, ranging from minor drawbacks, accidents, uh, service reports, MITs. Now all you need is the VIN number or the registration number, you put that in, then you pay a small fee, it will give you the entire history of that car. For example, on my screen right now is a history report for a BMW M4 and it gives you a quick overview and at a quick glance the mileage is fine, it wasn't stolen but it has been in an accident. Then we scroll down and we've got a load of service and MOT reports and then we can see the damage, the estimated repair cost being 30 to 40 grand and then there we go, we have the images there. So yeah, full front end impact. And then we got the after photos as well. Brand new Chevy. Crazy, isn't it? I recommend car vertical for any second hand car purchase. Got some valuable information that you might not know that you need. Thank you to these guys again for sponsoring the video. Now let's get back to installing that boost gauge. Yeah, so I'm gonna throw this. Someone has stolen my Audi pad. Have a look underneath this side, because I think this side is where we can get the wire in and through. So let's do that now. This is a glove box out job. Don't look at my CD collection. No, actually, look at it. Embrace it. If you don't like it, that's fine. Also, shout out to this channel because they've always got really handy tips. There's some hidden gems at the back of this glove box. I think I threw that in there. That's, a, that's the clutch switch, the old one. I didn't really want to do this because it's so dark in there, but it's just started raining. Now I've got to try and squeeze around. Hopefully. It should be okay. Look at that, loads of room. In we go. That'll do. I should probably change my cabin filler. That is disgusting. Anyway, what I was going to see is if underneath it, there might be a little hole. Or we can slide it through the vent, maybe. I decided to go get a haircut and then come back to this. Totally the same day. So the first important thing when you're doing this is to find somewhere where the airline can feed through the firewall. Because essentially you got the engine and on the other side you got the cabin. And in the middle there's just a wall. There's a couple of grommets sitting inside which a lot of people recommend trying to put them through there and that's great if you're trying to keep it neat and everything like that factory holes you don't want to go drilling any holes however i've looked through all of the grommets here and all i can see behind them is just a foam wall i tried poking them all through and it just wasn't wasn't happening so what i've done is ripped out the cabin filter just throw it all out you don't need any of that just get rid of it and then come on the inside and remove the glove box and also the CD changer if you got that installed in your glove box as well 
and this is what we're left with. So on the inside, it looks like a mess, and you just, you can now see how messy and how cluttered it is in here. Like you can't, you have no idea where the grommets are. So what I've done is made a hole there. Well, I didn't make a hole. The hole was already there. I just opened up the doorways to use it. So that's where the cabin floor is and you can see straight through there. It's cool, we might need to make a, a hole in some of this plastic housing, but it's fine because we're not actually making a hole in the firewall. It's just a bit of plastic. We're gonna make it as, te as neat and tidy as possible. We don't want any um, air leaks coming through. So let me just run the, the hose through. I ended up having to get a longer hose because the one that was provided with the boost cage isn't really long enough. Thinking you've got to go from this side of the engine bay to that side of the cabin. Going for a four millimeter silicon hose and it's three meters in length. So this should be plenty long enough. That's like the size of the car. So we should be good. All right, we've got the hose running through. Now we need to find a path for it to go. As it's already on the side here, we're gonna go up here and around the dash, rather than trying to feed it through the radio. Cause I've already got, I got one wire, which is where my phone plug is in running into the radio. So I don't really want to make it too cramped in there. I'm gonna put this, feed it through up there and around there. Enjoy the time-lapse. Okay, so we got the hose coming up through there, round the dash, into here. We're just now ready to plug in the gauge on this side. All right, so it's in. It's the most basic in you've ever seen in your life, but it's in, it's plugged. We just gotta check that it actually works because there's no point doing everything else if we miss something here. So things that we're looking out for, we're gonna turn the car on, and we're gonna make sure that it goes into negative. That means it's, it's in vacuum, which means that it's working. Then we're gonna come in here, we're gonna spray some liquid on here, we're gonna see if this is bubbling. But it shouldn't be. But yeah, let's see if it actually is, because we just wanna make sure this isn't too tight. It's not clamped down all the way, so let's turn the car on and see if it's in boost. Here we go. Ooh, okay. So it's trying to do something, but it's not really doing it. So it does, it does move. And something's working. I'm going to take it for a drive, but first of all, I've got, I've got to put my car back together because I made a bit of a mess. So I'm going to put my car back together and take it for a drive and see what it's boosting out. I'm not sure if it is supposed to be in minus or idle on a diesel. I know it's petrol, yeah, but diesel, I don't know, it's all new to me. First of all, we have to reset an airbag light because we unplugged a plug at the bottom of the glove box. That's apparently an airbag plug or switch. And so now when we turn the car on, we have the airbag light on and the traction control light on. So what we need to do is get the old reliable plug it in and it can reset these faults, reset airbag lights. If you don't, if, you, if you're modifying your Audis and your Volkswagens, you've got to get one of these, it's a lifesaver. Link is in the description, not sponsored. It's just true. There we go, done. Let's see if they are cleared. Huh, that's actually still on. Well, I don't know about that one, Chief. Maybe it will disappear when I drive it. As for you, you're coming with me. There we go, everything's gone. And by the way, I'm not actually gonna leave it like that. It's just for now. Obviously, I gotta wire in the wires. 
that uh, it comes on with the lights because at the moment it's kind of useless in the dark. I'm gonna go to McDonald's to pick up some dinner and you're gonna come with me and we're gonna see what this car's boosting at. I have no idea. I'm gonna tell you this as well. I actually, I think I might have made a mistake because it goes off the chart. Even like, I didn't even boost it, but coming to pick you up, it, it just went off the charts. Like, I think anyway, unless it's sitting stable at 25 PSI, Maybe it says a 25. I think it goes up to 30. I don't know, we'll test it. Do you want me to take the camera and? Your battery's flashing by the way. Oh, is it? Okay, turn off. to mention as well I think it is actually over boosting and that's the issue because you can see the gauge jumps in a certain t in a certain way like depends on how I put the power down if I put the power down it over boosts spikes and then starts cutting out whereas if I'm gentle on it it'll be fine don't know the last thing we checked as well was the torsion values which is something to do with when they change your timing belt there's a certain limit that it specifies it should be within, but the further out it is, the worse your car is going to run. So this is a last minute thing that I decided to check. Really easy to check it if you've got OBD11. The closer to zero it is, the better. And mine is at like 1.01, .01, which I don't think is going to make a difference to how the car runs at all. Boost gauge is in and installed, but I ended up ordering a vent, like a vent mount for it to sit in, to sit above the light switch and that's coming from someone that I just saw make them on Facebook if you think he free prints them so that's just come that's now back at my parents house in the next video whatever it is I'll show you it properly show you what it looks like when it's installed at the moment it just looks so ghetto I'm not gonna leave it like that I promise but I might because why not yeah, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Thanks again to Car Vertical. Check out the link in the, the description, and I will see you in the next one.